Houdini has a really advanced bevel system. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how you can control your bevels with custom attributes. For this example, I loaded uh, this simple geometry I, I did in Blender. So just a very quick model. Now let's start to make our bevels. So we're gonna first we're gonna group group the edges. Let's call it something like edges one. We're gonna group it like this. So we need. Now let's put in a bevel. You and use group at one. And this is so this is what we get. Disable the vertex split and let's just put in a normal node at the end by face area. Now, how can you uh, control your bevels? So, you can control the edges with creating a parameter on them. Crease is the most simplest node to use. So, you check offset scale. Put it as the attribute to create, and now if we, if we select some edges, for example, these ones, and now we'll slide it, we can change the bevel. So we can make those sharper, less sharp. Can put in more segments. No, so we can do this kind of fun thing. And if you would like to change the scale of of the bevels on the points, you could use this other attribute. And for this, for example, you can use the point node. We're just pretty much just making attributes so anything that creates attributes you can use it now well, for points you can do this just change the name to p scale change it to float and uh, constant value right now we're changing all the points so we just want to specify example, this, 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 this. So basically these corner points. And you can create this kind of nice effect on the edges. You can also maybe use some subdivide to smoothen the shape out a bit more. Yeah, this looks pretty decent. Now only you can still control all your edges, which is really cool. Also, I noticed it looks a little bit better if you change the shape to chamfer. So I guess this looks more interesting. Let's have a look at another example. So in here, I just copied my previous model, my previous setup, and I just changed the model for this simple geometry. And in this, in this example, we're gonna use a color or actually an attribute to drive the, the bevel width. So let's do this. So in here, I just want to low or higher this threshold so I don't get as, as, as all the edges that's too high actually yeah seems perfect you only get the sharp edges and now let's first no oh, let's use a color note duplicate it twice okay and first thing I'm just gonna disable textures 
because I'm using a matcap shader and it wouldn't show. So now I got all black color. Now I got all white color. I'm just I just want to use it on uh, these points. I just want these points to be white. And now we can use um, an actual crease node to get creases and with the subdivide subdivide we can just subdivide our mesh to get to get more more points to work with okay just I just need to switch this to something like a flat shaded Okay, and it doesn't seem to recognize the creases. Yeah, something like this. So, which is a more points, but but we still keep the sharp corners. Okay, and what happened to our geometry? Well, it's blurred a little bit, which is what we want. But if you if you don't have the option to make a subdiv subdivided geometry, you can also use an attribute blur. So you don't want to blur the position, we don't want to blur the color. So with this, you can just blur the colors. We can just subdivide once, and I can play with the blur. So something like this is fine. And and now we would like to uh, get this. We like to get this uh, off. Actually, this. Uh, P scale attribute from our color, so we can use an attribute tree. Wrangle, okay. It's a wrangle. Now we need to get this P scale. So P scale will be one component because P scale is is just a float, and the color is. Is a vector it's three numbers RGB we need just one component so we can type in CDR to get just uh, just the one attribute so let me run it on points so now we have P scale and as you can see we get these values but they're quite small I don't think it's gonna work properly now. And just disable these two. Actually, I can shake it off. Okay, so what happens? Uh, the add group, we can create second add group, just to be sure. Number two. Let's use add number two. Right, and you see we get we get this pinching, but right now it's not the the size we want, so we have to adjust our adjust the expression a little bit. We need to fit the range. We don't want it to go from zero to one. We need we need to fit it to another range space scale equals this so now it works and as we can see the the bevel is much wider now 
Well, you know, it's, it's a bit tedious to exchange the numbers over here, so it's not very interactive. So what we can do is we can create sliders for these numbers. You can do it by typing channel, parentheses, let's call it minimum, doesn't matter. It's just how you want to call it. Now let's take, create the maximum channel. Create this pair of parameters. Maximum, minimum. Let's make it 10 for example. We are using now the, the color attribute to create this variable um, bell width. It's really cool. Here is another example I spent a little bit more time on. So as you can see, this is my base mesh. And this is uh, the first level of bevels. And this is my final bevel. And um, one thing I, I would like you to notice is that these kind of things, these are really hard to make uh, in another programs. Like usually you don't have the control over, over the width and these kind of things are really, really difficult to make in another software. You would probably have to have to model it, something like this. But you know, then you just can't go back to this shape and just simply simply tweak it. Like for example, I've prepared this little transform node. Like as you can see in here, I just I just modified. I can still modify the shape very easily and, and this is really cool like you're not bound to you're not locked to, to the bevels you make See? you can change the basic shape and it, and it all updates so you can finesse your shape without penalty or create variations. And, you know, you can just play with different sorts of bevels, change, change the width. Like this one, but get to the blur. You can play with the shape. But, you know, it offers you a great deal of flexibility. And this is my final example. And in here, you can see I started with just this simple shape. Turn out the material and the background. You can see it is a fairly simple shape. The, the, the boxes are boolean in, and I just assigned some materials. So I assigned some materials, unwrapped it. Uh, pressing Control 4, split the view, space 1, space 5. And if you're if you're getting this background and you don't want it, you can turn it off like this. So now I have some nice UVs. Uh, control 1, space 1. I'm getting back into my 3D view. And now I did the same thing. I just selected some some edges I want to bevel first because I didn't want to do all the bevels at once 
I just um, put some values, how much I want to bevel, the creases, and then I did the bevel. So I can see this, this one, I can control that one as well. And then I did another set of bevel, again controlling the width and getting rid of end guns just putting some normals so it looks much more pretty and you know as you can see i have nice nice levels that i can turn on and off anytime no problem i can change the shape and it will still update and and one of the coolest things about Houdini bevels is that it doesn't destroy your UVs. So, as you can see, the UVs stay pretty intact. Actually, we can split the view, and as you can see, they're holding up pretty decently. And so far, this is the only software I know that doesn't destroy your UVs after beveling. So this is a huge advantage. So I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.